There are so many videos about the Red Komodo 6K S35 on YouTube, but do they all tell the truth about this camera? At the end of July 2024, I purchased a used Red Komodo 6K. During the first two weeks of testing it, I realized a humongous amount of false information out there. I want to clarify that I'm not being paid for this video and it is not sponsored by Red Digital Cinema, Nikon, Panatronics or anybody else. I am creating this video so that you can hear my honest opinions, see some footage and understand my experiences with this camera after two weeks of testing it. I want to provide insights from someone who likes red cameras and has worked professionally with Blackmagic cameras for over two years. I'm Ruben and I love good music, filming and learning something new every day. Since May 2023, I've been discussing red digital cinema cameras after I visited the British Society of Cinematographers in London, UK. There, I was highly impressed by these cameras' image quality and characteristics. Then, in October of the same year, thanks to Panatronics, I had the chance to get my hands on the brand new Red Komodo X and do some tests. And again, I was very impressed with the results and how much flexibility the R3D code gives. I continue working with Blackmagic cameras and I plan to continue doing so. Still, at the end of July 2024, I purchased a used Red Komodo 6K. When I started using it, I discovered the amount of false information many people have posted on YouTube about this camera. Hence, I decided to make this first video. We went on a road trip to the Alps to test this camera. Now, packing was an interesting thing. I needed two things. Well, more than two things, but let's start, me, let's start with two. I needed something to hold my camera inside my Sandmark travel backpack, a handle for the Komodo and a monitor. More about the monitor in a second. And because I waited too long, neither the pouch I found on Amazon nor the black foam would arrive on time. So I decided to make this. So basically I found a piece of foam and uh, and I carved this myself. So what I did was I I made a space for the for the Komodo, uh, another one for the Black Magic 6K and three for the lenses, the, the, the Canon uh, 24 to 105, the Sigma 70 to 300 macro, and uh, the Sigma 18 to 35. And uh, you know, you have to improvise, but this went very well inside, and, and, and then I put the rest of the stuff, like batteries, etc., on my other backpack. I didn't use the Blackmagic 6K. As soon as I turned on the Komodo, I just wanted to test all the features, so I did. First thing that caught my attention was the monitor. It's too small and hard to use under the sunlight. But the app is so excellent and easy to connect that it was life-changing. I can imagine working with the 7 inches small HD monitor. But for now, I have to work with what I have. Second thing was pulling focus. I'm so used to Blackmagic focus speaking and focus assist that I felt lost for a while. Just a little while because Red has these features that you can focus very easily and because you only have to check your traffic lights, focus and compose your frame, off I went. This is my favorite tool to focus on. Basically, when you adjust the focus, whatever is white is in focus. So you can't miss anything. So yeah, pulling focus became a piece of cake. Oh, and in case you don't know, I don't like autofocus. I'm an old dog with a old school and manual guy. <laughs> One of the first professional cameras I bought was the Canon EOS R. I decided to purchase that camera after watching thousands of videos about cameras with insufficient low light capabilities. Thing is, did I ever shoot in low light conditions? And the funny thing is that I kept that mantra for the longest time. And so I often hear red cameras are horrible in low light conditions. In fact, they made the Komodo X because the original Komodo was very bad in low light. 
Just to clarify, the Komodo X wasn't built because the OG Komodo was bad in low light. It was built as a very different camera, as an A camera. But if you don't know what was the purpose of creating the red Komodo, in that case, I strongly advise you to watch my video up here. So let me show you some footage from a camera built in 2019, 2020. And yes, we are in 2024. Oh, just to clarify, all the footage I will show you was shot in 6K in extra low quality, including this video. Okay, here I am in, in my office and I want to show you the amount of noise that the Red Komodo 6K produces or, you know, we we, we check and we agreed. One of the first thing and the most important things that I, I noticed, and this is something that is not so positive, but we know already, we knew already, is that the audio preamps in the Red Komodo are not very good. This is something that we knew and as we all know, the Komodo wasn't designed with this objective. So we can't complain, but I, 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 I'm sorry for, for the audio because it's not compared to the audio I deliver normally in my videos, but I, at the end, I wanted to leave it like that, just to, to I, I realized this just recording the video. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm using this Sennheiser microphone and I have to turn it on because the Komodo doesn't have any phantom power. But anyway, let's go to the noise. So let me put the microphone near my mouth and show you this. So this is a scene, a shot that I took and uh, this was late evening very late as you can see outside in the car and this is the the, the shot it goes like this from the beginning i was inside the a hotel a bnb &B, and i was panning through the reception and uh, and that's it this is this was dark of course i use the sigma 18 to 35 because it opens at 1.8 absolutely now let me show you what it looks like and uh, after the when i put the lot and this is like the raw now with the lot is like this now what lot i'm using if you go and you click you right click here and you go to lots you go to red and i'm using this one so this is the low contrast and the soft size 33 the last one okay this is the one i'm using here now what i did i before that i did two nodes one exposure and what i did with the exposure is that i brought up just a little bit the shadows as you can see just a little touch all right you can see here in the scopes but obviously this is dark if you go like this you can see that there is a considerable amount of noise here so what i did is that i went to a noise reduction and i applied a very very simple and straightforward noise reduction a frames three and then i went to temporal threshold and i put seven and boom that's it you can see the difference between the door here you can see before and after before and after and that that is good enough to change dramatically the amount of noise that you would see here noise no noise and this is a very simple there are there are other noise reductions that are more complex than that and it will have of course a much better result so it's not really what we heard about the look this one doesn't even have uh, any any noise reduction and it looks pretty good <laughs> so you know this is a little example another thing that turns people off more often is hearing about the red komodo's boosting or starting time in fact, many people don't even consider this camera for documentary work because of this horrible handicap. Well, I'm here now in front of you to tell you that this is not what you've heard. I won't lie to you, calibrating the sensor takes some time, but not starting the camera. Uh, so this is a little demo, so you can see how I, my, my routine. So basically, what I used to do is, you can focus here, Becky. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have my daughter as a camera woman. 
So basically what I used to do is I used to, I have my Komodo here, my battery, my battery plate and my lens. No, this is a little demo. So I used to take my, my Komodo and attach the plate. First you should attach this here. Uh, I'm gonna have to need to put my glasses. I'm gonna need, okay. And uh, this has a little red thing. Okay, I don't see, all right, there you go. Red thing is here. Okay, now I attach the plates. Okay, place is attached. I attach the battery. So we have, we have power here. Then I open here, attach the lens. Okay. Then I turn on the camera here. Okay. I place the camera on the floor. Again, this was my routine. I put the stuff here. I close the backpack. Put the backpack on. This is no cut, this is all live, okay? I take the camera and the camera is ready to be used. So you tell me if it's too long. Well, almost ready. Why almost? Well, because the camera has to arrive at a certain temperature to work at the highest efficiency. What does this mean? The camera has two little letters on the top, T slash E. When the camera turns on, the T may be red or orange, depending on the temperature difference from where the camera was stored. Red Digital Cinema made this to optimize noise in the camera's sensor. When the T becomes green, your camera is ready to be used. The time can vary depending again on the temperature. If the T remains red, you need to calibrate the sensor. I was shooting in the Alps for two weeks and I needed to calibrate the sensor only twice. The rest of the time the T was orange and after a few seconds it turned green, ready to be used. Now for power, I brought two kinds of batteries. I got a couple of BP955 blue shape and uh, I got the Anthem V-mount plate and the Titan Micro V-mount 90. I will make separate videos about these batteries because first you deserve to be informed. And number two, I don't want this video to be too long, but you definitely want to hear what I have to say about these batteries. The Anton Bauer Titan Micro 45, 95, 105, the V-mount battery plates, the single and the double, and the charger. So stay tuned. Now, funny enough, my Komodo didn't always recognize the blue shape red approved batteries and they took way too long to recharge, while the Anton Bauer worked amazingly well. You only need to check the lights bars here to see how much power you have left but as i said more videos coming about this so i didn't need to complicate myself i wanted to keep things simple because i wasn't working on a big production or in a studio the red komodo is known for its modularity it can be used very small with just one battery well better two and a lens even without handle like I did. However, it can also be equipped with handles, large batteries, monitors, small or large lenses, matte boxes, you name it. In my case, it was perfect for a run and gun situation and neither boosting time nor noise or calibration time made me lose anything I wanted to shoot. Be cautious evaluating reviews and feedbacks on YouTube and Instagram as these platforms often feature bias opinions. If you're interested in the capabilities of the Red Komodo, I suggest renting one for a day to test it out. While a red camera may not be the right fit for everyone, I highly advise considering a red camera within your budget to elevate your production standards and push 
your work to the next level. Thank you for watching. Peace and love.